Hello and welcome to this course on Groovy Programming. My name is Matt Greencroft and I've been programming in a number of languages for about 20 years. I've designed this course to be a comprehensive guide to writing code in Groovy. I'm assuming that you have some experience in programming with Java. If you've done Virtual Pair Programmer's Java Fundamentals course, then you'll certainly have all the prerequisites for this course. I assume you know what is meant by phrases like classes, conditions, loops and interfaces, for example. If you're more of a novice with Java, then you'll be able to do this course, but you might want to look up any terms you're not familiar with. There are, I believe, two drivers for learning Groovy. Maybe you're a Java developer who wants to create code more quickly or achieve things in code which are simply difficult to do in Java, or perhaps you're creating websites using the Grails framework and want to get the most out of the Groovy language which this framework uses. Now, I don't talk much about Grails in this course. Virtual Pair Programmers is currently planning a separate course on Grails, and depending on when you're watching this, that course may or may not yet be available. But if you are a Grails developer, then you'll find this course really useful to maximize the power of Grails. This course has been written completely from scratch. I've worked hard to make sure that what we'll be learning will allow you to create the kind of code that is being written today in many real-world production quality projects. In fact, throughout this course, we are going to work on a real-world example case study. I'm not going to talk about abstract concepts. We'll ensure everything is grounded with real-world examples. If this is your first virtual pair programmers course, let me explain how it works. You won't sit there listening to me talk for hours. It's a very hands-on course and you should be following along and typing in along with me. Many of the chapters contain practical exercises for you to do. Our style is based on virtual pair programming. You will be actively programming throughout this course and in fact that is the best way to learn. I want you to imagine that I am sat next to you and you can look at my screen at any point, but that you are following along and creating for yourself everything that I am typing into my computer. I'll be taking you through every step along the way, including installing and configuring any software you need to be creating applications in Groovy. All you need to run this course is going to be a working computer running either Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, or some variant of Unix or Linux. If you are using the download version of this course from our website, make sure you have downloaded the practicals and code files. These contain sample code that you can refer to throughout the course in a folder called End of Chapter Workspaces. There's some guidance for the practical exercises we'll be doing. These are in a folder called PDFs for tasks, there's some software that we'll need on this course in the software folder, and some starting workspaces and additional files that we'll use in the starting workspaces folder. I want to make sure that you can get through this groovy course successfully and that you pick up marketable skills along the way. If you get stuck, then there are a number of things that I've provided to help you. First, you can check the sample code in the Practicals and Code folder to compare your code to mine and see if you can work out your own way out of the problem. For every exercise we do in this course, there is a full work through on the video of me creating the working code. We publish on the website an errata where we list any known problems with the course, and you'll also find on our website links to blog posts which give extra information about some of the topics on this course. Right now, as we're recording this, there aren't any errata or blog posts, but do check here. If that doesn't help, then don't stay stuck. You can always contact us using the link on our webpage. Click on Contact and then select Technical Help. You'll need to log into our website and choose Groovy from the drop down. On this page, you'll be able to describe the problem or ask a question, and optionally, you can copy and paste in your stack traces or error messages and upload any supporting files. 
If you want to zip up your full project, then you can send us this and we'll see if we can recreate the problem you're having. We can only really help you with the course topics. I'm afraid we can't help you design your own applications or fix the errors in your own code, but for anything relating to the course materials, our support team will be happy to help. We try and respond to all requests for help within two working days. I'm now going to run through the topics we'll be covering on the course. The course is split into two halves with a large practical exercise in the middle. In the first part of the course, we'll cover the basics of Groovy syntax and programming. In the next chapter, we'll learn what Groovy is and how it relates to Java and the Java Virtual Machine. We'll also install Groovy in this chapter. In chapter three, we'll see how to configure Eclipse to work with Groovy, and then we're ready to start Groovy coding. Chapter four will cover objects and constructors, and then we'll move on to look at dynamic typing in Groovy in chapter five. Chapter six looks at methods in Groovy, and chapter seven looks at exceptions. In chapter eight, we'll look at strings, and in chapter nine, ranges and looping. Chapter 10 looks at operators, including operator overloading. And in chapter 11, we introduce one of the important features of Groovy, which is called closures. Chapters 12 and 13 focus on collections. We'll look at lists in chapter 12 and maps in chapter 13. And then chapter 14 is an optional chapter on regular expressions. Chapter 15 covers unit testing, and that's the first half of our course. At this point, we've got enough groovy knowledge to be able to start to create our case study. So I'll introduce the case study in chapter 16, and we'll create the first part of our application in four stages over the next four chapters. The second part of our course looks at some more advanced techniques in Groovy, and we'll start with chapter 20 by looking at working with objects in a more dynamic way. Chapter 21 covers files and templates, and in chapter 22, we look at object extensions, ways to add methods into objects. Chapter 23 covers XML and builders, and in chapter 24, we'll be looking at databases. We've then got three chapters that focus on the Meta Object Protocol. We'll start in chapter 25 by looking at intercepting methods, chapter 26 has injecting methods, and chapter 27 synthesizing methods. Then in chapter 28, we're going to look at variable scope with enclosures, and in chapter 29, we'll be creating a domain specific language, or DSL. Chapter 30 revisits unit testing in a more advanced way with stubs, mocks, and expandos. And then in chapter 31, we'll be packaging our application for deployment. And there's a summary at the end of the course. Well, I hope you're ready to get started. So I'll see you in chapter two.